More names, more companies keep getting added to the cancel culture as people try to outwoke each other. And tensions remain high. Less than a week after protesters stormed the U.S. Capitol building with apparent plans for demonstrations on the days leading up to next week's inauguration. Joining us now, a man who himself has been banned by Twitter, the president of Judicial Watch, Tom Fitton. Welcome back to Wake Up America. Nice to have you with us this morning. Yeah, Tom, thank you for joining us this morning. We want to get right to the chase. Why did Twitter ban you? I put out a tweet I put out repeatedly about hydroxychloroquine, of all things. Mm. And uh, someone previously had actually complained to uh, Twitter about it back in September. And Twitter told me, look, we, we looked at this specific language and found it not to be in violation of the rules. <laughs> and on Friday, they tell me, uh, in fact, it was after I posted it and didn't give me any chances. They just out of the blue told me I need to take it down. <laughs> and even if I took it down, I'd be locked out for seven days. I've appealed it, which has also delayed my coming back onto Twitter, but obviously it's pretextual. I, I'm a, a conservative leader on Twitter, obviously, and uh, you know I, I and many other conservatives, including my group uh, Judicial Watch, my colleagues there, we've lost 135,000 followers on Twitter. My account has lost 10% of its followers. And if you think it's about me, if you think it's about President Trump, it's a totalitarian impulse that's now being pursued by the left to take off all conservatives from all of the Internet. And if you think it's limited to social media, I'm sorry, guys, they're coming after Newsmax. They're coming after your competitors. They do not believe that conservatives should have a voice anywhere in America. Yeah, just uh, by the way, Tom, you bring up a good point. Just so our, our viewers are aware, they are trying to get advertisers to to pull away from conservative networks and uh, it, it's affecting the media as well. There was a tweet that I saw two days ago that had a whole list of uh, conservative journalists, journalists, people in the media listed on it that they think should also be canceled because, you know, they Twitter seems to only want to censor one way. Uh, I did see your Instagram post yesterday, Tom, where and you're the head of Judicial Watch. So this is ironic, but you posted that you are appealing Twitter's decision. I don't even. I, what is the appeal process? I haven't been banned from Twitter yet. I'm sure it'll happen at some point. But I, what does the process look like? Because I just pictured Jack Dorsey at like an eyes wide shut party when this all happens, and then he just denies the appeal. Like there's no formal process. They can do whatever they want, right? That's exactly right. It's arbitrary and capricious. Uh, they're pretending they're following a process. It's obviously not a process. I have. Um, at least I had 1.3 million followers. It's now uh, 1.2, I think. Uh, but you know there aren't that many uh, Twitter accounts with that number of followers. I've heard nothing from Twitter. Hmm. The media has covered this. I've heard nothing from Twitter. They specifically approved this tweet before and now locked me out for who knows how long now at this point with this appeals process that is now a which is a black hole in terms of uh, being able to talk about what went on. Even if they had come to me and said, look, Tom, you've posted this before. We now find it in violation of our rules, so please take it down. That's a very different conversation to locking me out as punishment for something that they've uh, I, I've not only uh, posted two or three times a week, but something that had been specifically found to be not in violation of their rules previously. But, you know, I'm not the only one. Obviously, the president of the United States has been targeted. Uh, other uh, conservatives are being targeted. And as I'm pointing out, uh, you know, when you see Parler.com get taken down, they're not only talking about people who are posting the wrong things, they're now going after entities and trying to take away their ability to access the Internet at all or transact any business uh, to keep their companies alive. Well, something we were just talking about earlier in the show right here on Wake Up America was that, you know, the Chinese Communist Party can can post a tweet saying that coronavirus didn't come from Wuhan and it was being imported by frozen foods and right. that doesn't violate their rules. But your tweet was deemed misinformation, correct? Yeah, I said I said hydroxychloroquine is a safe drug. I didn't say use it for COVID. I didn't say use it. I said it's a safe drug, which, of course, it and is. It is a safe drug. Yeah. It's, you know, it's... <laughs> it wouldn't be on the market if it weren't a safe drug. I mean, obviously, you have to take it with a doctor's prescription. But th they don't care about that. This is not reason. This is not uh, balance. This is not anything that they're enforcing in a fair manner. And look, Section 230 doesn't protect 
this type of activity. They're engaging in business fraud, these companies, when they're saying they're doing it uh, for the reasons they're uh, pretending yeah. to. No, you make a good point. Uh, this Section is not about stuff. violence. This isn't about safety. This is about politics and targeting uh, people who share the wrong views or have the wrong views. This is America today. The First Amendment um, is being canceled now by the wokesters out there, the woke crowd. Uh, the Section 230 stuff, too, repealing that doesn't go far enough because that law comes from the mid-1990s. The, the law itself is a fossil. It addresses things that, were never in that weren't in existence when the law was written, even though the law has been sh uh, changed over the years. Uh, they need to write a new law so these modern-day robber barons, the, the uh, Dorsey's and Zuckerberg's of the world, uh, don't have the power that they have. Um, does it bother you? And this is this is American culture today, and it's a great glimpse at it. Does it bother you that somebody like O.J. Simpson has a Twitter account and he's posting little videos every day, and they're they're so cute and funny, and he says hello, Twitter world, and he's it's O.J. Simpson, the guy he killed his ex-wife and her lover. At least that's what the civil case found. The, the criminal case didn't find Again, that. Again, wasn't but, convicted on that. Yeah, wasn't convicted. But who cares? I mean, this guy, but in America now, we're like, no, it's the Jews. He, he did his time, sort of. Look, I, if there's a desire to enforce these rules across the board and they're, and they're doing it and it's fair, you know, that's a very different debate versus targeting. I mean, if you talk about O.J. Simpson, you have the leader of Iran still on mm -hmm. Twitter. Right. Yeah, I told we him. talked about that this morning, too. So, yeah. so, you know, so this is a man responsible for the deaths of countless Americans. President Trump, and, and they're pretending President Trump's been inciting violence. That's a big lie. He wasn't inciting violence. I mean, he, he had a tweet taken down calling for peace. So this is not uh, this is not a honest approach here. And uh, you go, Rob, to the Section 230. Section 230, in my view, doesn't allow them to do what they're doing. They're right. not operating in good faith. Uh, just as Thomas has suggested, it's being misapplied by certain courts. And in the least, it needs to be reformed uh, to make it clear that um, you know if they're going to take people down, or edit people, or label them based on their content, they're acting as publishers. And if they're going to act as publishers, they've got responsibilities and liabilities that come with that. Yeah, Tom, we and showed... it means it may, it may mean letting O.J. Simpson tweet. Yeah, we showed those tweets I, of the I, Iran You know, leader. you don't see, I, have you had, you've had probably every major conservative figure in the country on this show or on this network. Yep. Has anyone come out and said, I want to see my left-wing opponents taken down? No. And the point I was making is that if Twitter is going to be a message board as it was originally designed, I think you should be on there. I think President Trump should be on there. And yes, I think that O.J. Simpson should be on there as well and let the American public and let Twitter users decide for themselves who they want to follow and what they want to look at. And guys, I don't think they're doing it on their own. I, I think uh, oh, they're now lock there's step an with issue the Democratic where the government Party. officials are working with yeah, them. No, absolutely. They're Did doing it. Hillary Clinton advocating for more censorship. Yeah. To, All Tom, these politicians super... advocating for more censorship. And now with the Biden administration coming in, uh, you're going to have uh, policy supporters in big tech suppressing uh, watchdog groups like Judicial Watch who are mm -hmm. going to be asking questions and suing the Biden administration. This is a... This is a serious, serious issue it for It is a all serious Americans. issue, Tom. I don't want to cut you off. Unfortunately, we're out of time. We'll have to see what does happen in the future. A lot, I'm sure, is going to be scrolling through our Twitter feeds, our Instagram feeds, and yeah. we'll keep an eye on what happens to yours. Thank you so much for joining us right here. Love to have you back on, Tom.